Hi guys, Chris, back in the cider shed. I'm going to do another cider from Ross on Y today. I'm going to do the Ashton, Ashton Burton jersey. Ashton Brown jersey, pardon me. Uh, we did one uh, a couple of films ago, but that was a 2017. This is the 2015. So there you go. So I look. 2015 Wild Ferment Oak Cask. So it's going to be interesting to see what those two years have done to change the flavour of this cider. It's open already. I had a bit of I opened it, I had some technical issues with the camera, so I haven't tried it yet. But I poured some out. Um, let's read what it says on the side though. Uh, ABG, we've kind of read this before, but it's, it's a different vintage, so it's going to be slightly different. ABG, ABG is one of our favourite apples, a bittersweet variety that grows slowly but produces a truly delightful cider. Pressed when ripe in 2015 and then fermented in a knock barrel before being left to mature. As the years pass, the flavour has evolved, developing caramel notes that blend seamlessly with the savoury, nettle-like notes of the ABJ, a journey to the past. Nettle-like notes. Well, we'll look out for those. Um, got a cheese as well, though. I'm really getting into the cheese at the moment. I'm really enjoying an excuse to, to try them. So what have we got? We've got a soft cheese, cow's milk cheese this time. Let's um, see if I can get it without being glaringly white. So I'm going to just get that there. There you go. So there it is. See the rind on that. A bit of pinkishness there, the yeasts, a bit of that white stuff, the penicillin candidum, but just a frosting of it. Same stuff as you get on camembert and stuff, but it's a nice frosting on it. It's not a thick white rind, really into, the, really into those thick white rinds you get on commercial breeze and camemberts. You flip it over actually, something on this side. I don't know if you can see that, uh, that green mark there. Okay, so what's that? Well, that tells us something. That tells us that this cheese is fermier. That is farmhouse. If that was red, this would be industrial. So industrial cheeses made on a larger scale, uh, pasteurised milk, I'm going to assume. Um, but this is a farmhouse one. Raw milk, small production, handmade. Yeah. Uh, Robichon comes from the Savoie, uh, the sort of French Alps, and at high altitude. Um, it's a cheese born of deception. Reblouché, the verb, the colloquial sort of verb, means to pinch twice or to pinch again, meaning to kind of milk again, to milk a cow a second time. Um, tax collectors used to come and used to, the dairy farmers used to pay their taxes in milk, a proportion of the milk that they got from the animal. So what they would do is the tax collector would come, they'd milk the cow, and then the tax collector would take a proportion of what it was that they'd milked. But they didn't fully milk the cow. They left some in there and they took that out after they milked it again, probably she, after the tax inspector had left. And the milk from the second milking is a bit richer as well. And they used it to make this cheese, Robichon. It's like a secretive cheese. It was just being eaten on the farm by the farmers. Um, so yes, that's, that's how the name uh, Robichon came about. Most cheese names come from like a region or a place. You know, like Cheddar, Buffalo, uh, Comte. They're all sort of regions, places. Um, but not this one. It's named after nicking milk, basically, of someone. So there you go. I love this cheese. Quite delicate, it's quite subtle, but like the uh, sand nectar we had, don't confuse that with bland. I love this stuff. Also, the rind can have a great, I mean, it's very delicate, but the rind can sometimes be very pungent. Um, yeah, it's got a bit on this. It smells like a, a barn or a stable that needs cleaning out. That's kind of what it smells like, and I kind of love that. And it comes from a farm and it smells like it does on the rind. But once you get into it, the, the paste inside is a lot more delicate than the, the, the aromatics from the rind would suggest. Okay, so I have unfortunately poured this out already, as you can see. There it is. So let's just get this um, glass up, have a look at it. I haven't tasted it. There it is. So I would say gold with a hint of amber, hazy, sort of unfiltered, delicate sparkles, a little bit of mousse when I pour it out. Just, just a little bit, but nice looking thing. So let's swirl this around. Have a sniff. So straight away, you got that funk, the funk from Ross and Y, which is great. Love it. Um, also, there's there's definite, definite ripe red apple in there, aged apple, I would say, but also a hint of. There's almost like there's like sweetness. I want to say toffee apple. We're edging towards toffee apple, I believe. Nice. Let's have a taste. Cheers.
slight glitch there. My phone's playing up today, don't know why, but literally, I just, it just stopped and I've just started again, so we're going to carry on. Taste it again. Whoa. This is bigger than the 2017. Quite a lot bigger. I can feel the, I think I can feel the alcohol more than this. What is it? 8.4, is it going to be 8.4? Should we guess? 8.4. Good guess. Um, so this is rich. Has the tannin, delicate tannin, but it's definitely there. Minerality, hint of leatheriness. There is some quite, it's quite rich. It doesn't feel dry, this. there's some real richness to it. And it is almost like a toffee apple-ish kind of character, actually. Toffee caramel thing. I think they mentioned caramel on the label. Didn't get any um, nettle on the nose, uh, but you know different people get different things um, this is a rich cider quite low acid lovely bubbles just the right amount of bubbles this is rich though and it feels like there's residual sugar in this it really does um, it's um, yeah for Ross and Y this is relatively sweet, I would say. I mean, it's not that sweet, but for us and why it is. You don't expect, I always expect it to be absolutely born dry. But there is like, yeah, maybe caramel, toffee apple, that sort of thing. Nice minerality, big, refreshing. Could do with this, could do with a hair more acidity, I think. I like sweet, I like rich, but every, it's all about balance. It's always about balance. And this, I feel, could just do with a hair more acidity. Uh, or you need to have it with something. We're going to have it with cheese. That's quite good. But actually it's quite round and rich. And that cheese is quite round and rich. So there's a possibility it's going to work quite well. Let me pour a little bit more of this into my glass. And we'll get the cheese up. And we'll have a have a taste of that. So again, I've got the cheese from Mons. Cheesemongers. Um, you can get Volbichon. It's pretty readily available in decent cheesemongers uh, around. But watch out for the industrial. The red plaque. Over the fermier. The green plaque. The Le Cru, the uh, raw milk, the pasteurised stuff, it does make a massive difference. The industrial stuff is actually kind of pretty bland. The Because uh, it is quite a subtle cheese anyway. So once you start industrialising it, it just gets, it goes from subtle to bland really easily. This is on the right side of that line, though, definitely. So, have a bit more of this. Right then. Where is my cheese knife? Here it is. Uh, yeah. Yeah, so, have a look. It's really kind of bulging out. I don't need to do that at all. Come on. What is going on with the uh, The contrast on there you go. See, bulging out there. Sorry about the contrast on this thing. I'm going to get it sorted. Bugging me. Anyway, don't matter. I'm going to post a, a picture up on it. Instagram anyway, so we're going to better look at it. Probably best have looking at it on that. So, I'm going to eat the rind as well. The rind is good. It's got texture, a nice sort of toothsome, I would say, texture. A little bit like the Sun Nectar, the rind that, that I enjoy so much. So, like I said, it smells quite. It smells lactic. It smells a little bit gamey almost. But it's got a. But that farminess from the rind is, is, is quite obvious. But there's like a meaty, gamey, sort of round, round butteriness to it. Anyway, let's try it. Mm. A bit like the Sunday care. It's delicate. But I can eat so much of this. So much of it. I love it. Mm. So, nice salt, delicate, integrated, just right. A little bit of acidity. Which is good because this is quite rich and fatty. It's cold, cold, coating my palate in fat. So I have a little bit of acidity just to zap through it. It's brilliant. Um, almost a yeasty character to it as well, I would say. Um, a subtle gaminess as well. Um, delicious. A bit more. I think that that cider might be a little rich for this actually. I think I need something with a bit more acidity, because this is quite rich, and this is quite rich. I 
Har vi sett det? Har vi sett det? Still pretty good. Still pretty good. They're both delicious. They're not fighting one another. I'm just being fussy, I think. Mm. And that rind's got a hint of sort of bitterness about it. In a nice way, which is the subtle sweetness in this with the bitterness is, works really well as well. That's good. Um, yeah. I mean, that's delicious. That is delicious. And that is delicious. So, happy bunny. Yeah, totally. So, yeah, Robichon. Delicate cheese. Have you ever had chapty flit when you've been skiing? That's what they use. Because it's melted cheese with cream and onions and garlic and potato. It's, uh, you know, I'm sure on a diet. Perfect. Um, so that's the cheese used for tarty flet. Interesting fact, though, people think tarty flet is a traditional old dish. It isn't. It was invented in the 1980s by uh, the, the people who were hired to market Holbuchon. It was manufactured from another peasant dish that was much more austere. Uh, but, so, yeah, so it's only been around for about 30 years, tarty flet. Um, but, yeah, they managed to con lots of people into buying loads of Holbuchon and melting it on potatoes. So, good marketing, that, innit? Okay, right. Guys, like both of these, like I say, if you can ever get anything from Ross and Rye, get it. It's always interesting. Even the stuff that doesn't suit my palate, it's always interesting. It's never dull. It always makes my synapses fire. And I, I think great food should do that. It absolutely should. Comfort food doesn't do that. Comfort food is literally that. It's just a blanket. It's just to comfort you, so you don't have to think too much. You know. Whereas interesting food, challenging food, um, that makes your synapses fire. If you... If you get, get excited about it and you're also you, you get um, stimulated by the flavours, that's a double bonus, you know, it's great. Okay, cool. Thanks for watching. Um, I'm going to have to cobble two bits of film together now to make this into one <laughs> continuous thing. Doesn't matter, I, I, I can do that. Um, so yeah, I'm probably going to post again tomorrow, but something a lot, I was going to do a shorter one today, but I'm going to do a shorter one tomorrow. Uh, I seem to be spending a lot of time in the shed. I think my wife's starting to wonder what I'm doing down here. Um, I have the films as evidence as to what I'm doing down here, but, you know, yeah. Okay, so, um, I hope to see you again soon, and until I do, cheers.